And welcome back into another episode of the North Star Takes Podcast. I'm Bailey Policki. He's Jacob Liberta. And we're a Minnesota sports podcast, uh, putting out multiple videos a week on all our beloved Minnesota sports. So if you're a Minnesota sports fan, please hit that subscribe button. If you're a Minnesota Wild fan, hit this like button, especially if you're a little worried about the Kevin Fiala situation, as that's kind of what we're going to discuss today is uh, clearly Fiala is in the doghouse of Dean Evison once again here, which really kind of blew my mind because Fiala seemed like he was one of the hardest working players on the ice to start off this season. Uh, clearly the goals haven't been coming for him. I think he's only got three maybe on the season. So, um, but he, he'd been working hard on, you know, penalty kill, uh, working hard along the boards, trying to make plays. He's hit a few posts. Like he's just really gotten unlucky. And I guess I haven't really noticed what's transpired over the last couple of games for him to be, you know, basically benched in one third period. I think he only had a couple shifts um, removed from the power play completely only to be replaced by Victor Rask of all people. <laughs> which is a whole other conversation. But um, I guess, what do you think about this? I mean, this seems to happen at least once a season where Fiala gets in the doghouse and kind of has to work his way back out of it, and then he seems to go on some tear. So do you think this is just kind of what you get with Fiala? Do you think this is just maybe the organization is not exactly treating him the best because they don't really see him here long term? What are you kind of thinking? Yeah, it's hard to know what to make of this because on the one hand, I, I would say – not be concerned. I feel like star players go through slumps. I mean, we were talking about uh, Kaprizov and worrying about him, but now I feel like he's putting together good performances lately, mm-hmm. and including that uh, four point or four points against um, Dallas. Dallas, yes, yeah. thank you, Dallas. And so, I mean, that, that that's another conversation too. We've already uh, certainly beat the drum with Kaprizov, but with Fiala, I'd say uh, on the one hand, you'd say, ah, oh, don't worry about it. He's just you know a star player that'll. Uh, find a groove or find a get a get hot really and yeah really start putting together good performances because we know he can heat up pretty quick but and at the same time too uh Everson and Fiala go way back to when Fiala was first coming up through the uh NHL ranks in the AHL when he was playing with uh the Milwaukee Admirals and uh Everson was the uh coach there and yeah. but even back then he's always shown Fiala tough love all the way to this point when they're uh, together in the wild, and I think it could just be one of those one of those stretches that he's just uh, really, yeah, in in his doghouse for some reason. And he's gonna uh, make him work out of it, but at the same time, like you said, the wild didn't didn't show commitment to Fiala by inking him to a long term contract extension this this last off season because you saw him dole out the money for Eck, they saw him dole out the money for Kaprizov for. Eck, it was eight years. They're looking to do Caprice off the same, but they ended up settling at five years. And then with Fiala, it's like uh, I'm pretty sure it was a team initiated arbitration. I saw, yeah. so that that ended up being like, yep, we're content with just riding another year with him. So mm-hmm. given the uncertainty with our uh, and really just being cap strapped for the uh, next few years here, they didn't want to uh, commit to him. And I think that's kind of telling that it's possible Fiala could just as well be on the move here pretty soon, just right away mid season here. So. I don't really know what to say about this. I, I feel like kind of caught in the middle where it's like, on the one hand, this guy's a star player, and I I think it would be pretty hard to let him go, but at the same time, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and I uh, get another talented player or players in here that could also help us win and win right now. That's the tough part. It's like, man, I really don't want to trade him. He's still clearly, in my mind, the second best player on the wild. I'm sure some people would, would argue Erickson Eck, just given the way he's performed this year, but – um, Fiala is a true goal scorer. Those are hard to come by. You have two on your team with Kaprizov and Fiala. Game and makers. I still really would like to see those two play on a line together, but I think it's becoming evident that that's just never going to happen. Um, so, yeah, kind of like you said, it's tough because you don't want to trade such a talented player, but if it's not working, you don't want to pound a square peg into a round hole. Exactly. And, like, you know, if you do move on from Fiala, you're probably getting a good player in return, maybe some draft compensation, um, which I don't I don't even know if the Wild would consider draft compensation because they got so many young studs in the system already, some who haven't even made it to Iowa yet that are playing in World Juniors or playing, you know, in different leagues across the world right now. So, um, but, you know, and you got Matt Boldy who's tearing up the AHL currently. He's the hottest player in the AHL. Oh, He's basically ready to jump into the NHL and play for the wild. So I think this could clear the way for a Matt Boldy ascension and he would probably immediately be a second line player. So it's, it's interesting because 
I I by no means want to give up on Fiala, but if he's ruining his welcome, if it's just not really working out, if he's not really doing what they're asking of him, um, to me it makes sense to then probably trade him and um, maybe get a center in return. I mean, we're still looking for centers. Our defensive depth clearly isn't as great this year. Now Spurgeon's out week to week, and we we saw in that Florida game how Kulikov just got absolutely destroyed. I mean, he he looked rough. I've thought John Merrill's looked pretty rough all season. Granted, it's your third D pairing, but say you're able to trade for a you know, pretty decent defenseman, you can move Goligoski back, and then – then you're pretty strong defensively. If you got Goligoski as like a 33, 34 year old playing on your third line defensive pairing. So I guess, what are your thoughts on that? Would you actually want to trade Fiala and what would you look to get in return? You know, right now, I think I would still say, no, I don't want to trade Fiala, but this situation is very fluid and that could change in a heartbeat. I think if we were to trade him, I would say, probably a defenseman right now, unless you can get your hands on a pretty solid center, but I feel like the Wolves are such a rarity in the NHL that not a lot of teams are comfortable moving on from them, so yeah, I truthfully, I don't know how realistic that is, so I'd, I'd probably be pretty content with the defenseman too, just uh, with the fact that you said, like, Spurgeon, I know he's not going to be out long term, but I mean, he is going to be out a little while, and that's going to hurt our, uh, the, our, really our, oh, excuse me, our defensive performance, and I think there's certainly we could add players there and it would help us a lot. But yeah, it's it's hard to justify moving on from him just because he is so talented, just naturally gifted. But at the same time, this might be the opportunity that Garen is looking forward to be able to move on from him and give one of our really young, talented prospects like like a Boldy a chance. Because I don't think Garen wanted to have him on the roster unless he was going to get significant run on a. Uh, on a premier line on this team. Like he didn't want to yeah. just make him some fourth liner that doesn't get a lot of ice time. Like he wants him play all the time. So if you move off Fiala, then you really give a guy like Boldy a chance to be like a top six forward. And that, that I think that's just exactly what uh, Garen wants. So, I mean, this could happen sooner rather than later, especially Boldy with the pace he's on in the AHL. It's like, you you can't possibly sit on him that much longer there. So yeah. I, I think there's a lot of, a lot of room there to move off Fiala for, maybe a defenseman, and then you add Boldy to uh, take his place in the uh, rotations there and on the, the those top two lines. And I I don't know. I I don't want him, but I think this could, very, this could very well happen in short order. Yeah, and what you have to remember about, like, getting a center as well is, like, you have Marco Rossi in the system. He's playing very well in Iowa. I'm sure he'll get called up at some point this season. So, like – Whenever that moment comes, I'm I'm basically ready to move on from Freddie Goudreau as well, especially yes. like if, if uh, Fiala's gone. I think part of the reason Goudreau was brought in was basically because he, he's played with Fiala um, throughout his career in Nashville and in the minors. And Goudreau's just really bringing nothing right now. They kind of have him going back and forth between center and wing. He's not really seeming to be great at either. So, like, I personally would – if he's going to be, like, playing wing, I'd rather see a guy like Beckman get more run. Um, get him in Boldy up here. Like, if you want to move on from Fiala, then move on from Goudreau at the same time. And I think, the, I mean, I think those guys could step right in and contribute right away. It's not like, I don't think they'd bring your team down by any means. So I guess that's kind of where I'm at too with like Goudreau because he's he brings nothing for me. And if you're going to move on from Fiala, you might as well move on from his running mate and uh, just kind of clean house. And yeah, maybe you don't get the center in, in return that you want, but you got Rossi waiting in the in, uh, waiting in the wings. Victor Rask, um, they love him for some reason, which it's weird because when he seems to play, uh, Kaprizov seems to play well. So I don't I don't know what the deal is there because I just really don't think Victor Rask is that great of a player. But um, Rask could probably play a little center for you in the time for the time being until Rossi's ready. So I guess that's kind of where I'm at. Overall, I think I'd still want to keep Fiala at least for a little bit, see if you can get out of the doghouse and start putting some pucks in the net. Yeah, I totally agree. Sometimes when it rains, it pours. So a guy go th- goes through a cold streak, and like you said, he's just been kind of unlucky. He's had a lot of chances. It just hasn't, like you said, hasn't put a lot of pucks in the net. So maybe you have a hot streak, have a couple good games, and then uh, you feel good about him again, and he gets out of the doghouse. Or at the same time, maybe he – uh, reminds everybody why he's such a good player, and then teams come <laughs> knocking on the wild door to trade for him. So you, you just don't know. And I think that's the unpredictability with Garen that you really don't 
you really don't know what he's going to do yep. on a week to week basis, I guess, because I think he's willing to make any and all changes to help this team win or help this team move forward and be in a good spot. So it you just never really know. But at, at the moment, like like you said, like I've said, I think uh, keep Fiala feels like the move, but at the same time, that could that could change pretty quick. Yeah, and what's great about this is the Wild are still in first place in the division, at least yeah, for the time exactly. being. Um, and maybe it's just because we're following it closely, but like it seems like there's been more stories and drama this year than normal. But it, it could yeah. just be because there's a lot more on the line. You have star players. The expectations, the expectations are, higher. are so much higher. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that, yeah, I think that's probably part of it. But it's 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 it. it they're interesting to follow, and as long as they can keep, you know, staying, stay in the top three in the division, really, because. I still have a feeling Colorado is going to make a charge here and come back and probably win this division. But as long as the Wild can stay in the top three in this division, improve up from their wild card position last year, um, that's really where I'm at right now. So just keep winning games. Uh, Kaprizov and Erickson Echo steady the steady the ship. So Fiala, yeah, totally hopefully, will get it figured out. Hopefully, yeah. But I think yeah, it's the same the game, like you said. We're we're talking about all this, but at the same time, like we're a first place team right now. I think we still we have a plenty of talented roster, even without Fiala. Again, like you said, Fiala is probably the second most naturally gifted player on this team. But at the same time, I think there's there isn't too much cause for concern at this point, just because we are still winning games, finding ways to win. That's that's the end of the game. At the end of the day, as long as we're winning games, it's, that's what matters to be the most. But yeah. um, obviously, I like to think about the long term future. But at the same time, I I think we're in a great spot to make some noise this year too. Absolutely. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Obviously, we'll keep pumping out wild videos as well. So yeah, if you uh, if you're new to this channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, especially if you're a Minnesota sports fan. Uh, hit the like button on this video as well. If you're concerned about Kevin Fiala, uh, if you're ready to move on, if you want to keep him, etc. Uh, give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram. And please leave your comments below what you're feeling about the Kevin Fiala situation. Um, what you think about trading him? What would you trade him for if you do want to trade him? And uh, if you're ready to see Matt Boldy and other prospects come up and uh, make a name for themselves. So thanks for watching.